This is KGW News at Sunrise. It's very difficult to process because these are somebody's brother, sister, child, mother, father. The fentanyl problem in Oregon is just getting worse. More on how much of the drug has been found in our state and the bigger impact it's having on emergency responders. Also a big weekend closure for parts of I-84. What you can expect as TriMet works on a new light rail bridge over the freeway. Brenda Braxton, did you mention the weekend a moment ago? I did. It is the beginning <laughs> of the weekend, my friends, and we are getting ready for the weekend this morning in our Sunrise Studios with help from the Oregon Cheese Guild. Katie, keep getting this little display together for us. Katie is going to help us preview what's known as the wedge. <laughs> it is a celebration of cheese. Follow me this morning as we go from the cheese <laughs> to my cheesy friends here at the news desk. Uh, Rod Hill apparently thought it was already the weekend because he mm -hmm. took the morning off. Three there. Chris McGinnis is in this morning. We'll have more on the cheese festival known as the Wedge coming up later. But Chris, what do you got? Rod's for actually otherwise? being a fantastic co-worker and picking up Sunday morning for oh, us so that oh, I nice. can enjoy the weekend off with my wife. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. And I have a great weekend forecast for you as well. But first, I'm going to start with that little sliver of a waning crescent moon there. That's from our Stoller Vineyard camera. Pretty cool to see that, right? All right, it's cool out there right now. It's 52 degrees last check at PDX. Hillsboro has slipped down to 43 at last check. And as we slide down into the Willamette Valley, 47, a popular number right now. Salem, Kaiser, Dallas, Aurora, Lebanon, all checking it with 47 degrees. All right, the plan for Friday, mostly clear out there right now. We will remain mostly clear or mostly sunny, if you will. This afternoon, high temperatures in the mid 70s. A fabulous looking Friday. And then we start to warm it up a little bit this weekend. More on that in a few minutes, guys. All right, Chris, thank you. We'll see you then. We start this morning with an update on the fentanyl crisis in the Portland metro area and local police are finding a lot more of it on our streets and it's putting a strain on not only them, but medical workers as well. We talked to a nurse at Providence St. Vincent. She says in just the last week, four people who overdosed on fentanyl ended up in the emergency room there. And according to numbers from the Oregon Health Authority, last year, nearly one third of the counties in the state saw more people die from a fentanyl overdose than any other drug. It's, it's a, sca a sad and scary thing that we're aware of because we're trying to figure out how to best deal with it. The good news is that we have a lot of tools right now. There could be more. Um, I'm sure people are working on that, but we work with what we have. Here's another alarming number. Last year, authorities seized 1.3 million pills laced with fentanyl. That's more than a thousand percent increase from just two years ago. And one thing many experts agree on, have a conversation with people around you about fentanyl. That's exactly what KGW will do in a special edition of Straight Talk airing tonight. Here's David Milko with a preview. Good morning, everyone. Today on a special edition of Straight Talk, the conversation experts say needs to happen in every family. We are talking about the flood of fentanyl and how just a few grains, far less than a pill, can be deadly. In Portland, we know of at least three high school students who were poisoned by fentanyl just this year. That includes 16-year-old Griffin Hoffman, a sophomore and tennis star at Northeast Portland's McDaniel High. And his mother, Carrie Cohen, joined us on our panel. Here's a preview. It remains important to me to keep my son alive this way, to keep his story alive. Um, I, I know that his story can help others or create more awareness among others, but mostly for me, it's really about keeping him alive. I think every parent should be sitting down and being like, hey, I heard about, I heard about fentanyl. I heard about these pills. Let's talk about it. Have you ever seen this? Um, any of your friends doing this? This is what I know about it. What do you know about it? Let's come together, right? Let's, let's share our knowledge. I'm more likely to use Narcan on a Friday night at a football game than I am for work. Mm -hmm. That was the conversation. That was the, hey, experimentation, I understand. You're gonna, you're gonna go out and do a whole bunch of different things and try different things and develop your own lifestyle and everything else. There's, here's, a, here's an opportunity where you don't get a second chance. No second chances. That is the former head of the DEA for Oregon there, along with Dr. Anna Hildy, a teen and youth psychiatrist. Also, Scott Karen, the federal prosecutor, handling some of our biggest fentanyl cases also on that panel. It's a conversation we hope every family will watch online this morning at KGW.com. Also tonight on KGW, a special edition of Straight Talk, Stopping the Flood of Fentanyl.
Now let's get you caught up on some of the other headlines we're tracking this morning. A crash killed two people in Beaverton last night. Just before 8 o'clock, Washington County deputies say a speeding car slammed into another car that was pulling out of the Sunset Square Shopping Center at 185th and Walker. The car that was hit was cut in two and burst into flames. The two people inside died. There were also two people in the speeding car. One was taken to the hospital, the other ran away. Police dogs couldn't track them down. That crash is now under investigation. Boeing will pay $200 million to settle a civil suit filed by the SEC. The agency accuses the company of misleading investors about the safety of its 737 MAX fleet. Two of the planes crash, killing 346 people. The lawsuit alleged Boeing knew there was a problem with the flight control system after the first jet went down. Boeing's former CEO has also agreed to pay a million dollars in the settlement. Neither he nor Boeing admit any wrongdoing. And today we'll get an update on plans to remove two derelict ships from the Columbia River. They first arrived in Portland back in 2006. Over time, plans to restore them fell through and both ships sank earlier this year. The Coast Guard lifted and towed one of them last week and plans to raise the second one tomorrow. Crews will also clean up any oil and debris the ships left behind in the river. We will know more following that update at 10 o'clock this morning. And those are some of your Friday headlines. We also have a couple of traffic headlines to share with you this morning. Let's start with the I-5 Interstate Bridge. Bridge lifts are scheduled starting at 9 o'clock this morning through 5 o'clock tomorrow morning because of maintenance work that ODOT is doing on the bridge cables. Each lift will last about 20 minutes, but ODOT says it won't lift both directions of the bridge at the same time, so the sidewalk will stay open for walkers and cyclists. And there's also a closure scheduled this weekend on the heavily traveled area of I-84 that you're going to tell us about. Absolutely. You see those big electronic signs all the time warning you that a mile and a half near Gateway is going to shut down in both directions for TriMet construction. Chris McGinnis has the details. So this weekend, TriMet will be doing two different construction projects. One will result in a closure of I-84 in both directions near the I-205 junction. TriMet will be hoisting 650 tons of steel above I-84 this weekend, installing a new bridge for redline service near the Gateway Transit Center. So a mile and a half of Interstate 84 will be closed in both directions from 10 p.m. Friday to 4 a.m. Monday. Once this part of the project is completed, it will essentially look like there's a new bridge, uh, and that's an important part of the larger and Better Red project. TriMet's Better Red project is a four-year, $215 million plan to extend Red Line service to 10 additional stops on the west side, from Beaverton to Hillsboro. Improvements on the east side include a second set of tracks near PDX and two new light rail bridges near the Gateway Transit Center. The first bridge will be put in place this weekend. We'll be able to help trains move around each other more efficiently, especially the red line. Uh, that'll have trickle down effects throughout the entire system. Long term gain from short term pain. TriMet will also be making some improvements to the blue line. So blue line service will be disrupted near Gateway this weekend. TriMet says all MAX lines will be running on 20-minute intervals. We will be running shuttle buses between uh, the Gateway Transit Center and East 122nd Avenue. All right, let's transition to weather now. A new video is showing the high winds Hurricane Fiona is bringing to Bermuda. The path of the Category 4 hurricane is currently passing near the island, bringing heavy rain and strong winds. It will then take aim toward Canada with Nova Scotia and Newfoundland in its sights. And take a look at this. So a company called Sail Drone teamed up with NOAA. I hope we have this video because it's really cool. And they sent oh, an uncrewed surface vehicle into the hurricane. It encountered 50 foot waves, winds over 100 miles an hour, all to gather data 
on the storm. Oh, that is going to give me seasickness. The drones are incredible, though. We yeah. never get that view right at sea level. And typically, you can't fly a drone in weather like that. So this, these drones are beefed up to handle that kind of abuse, and they're doing this to gather data at the at the right at the sea surface and and near ocean mm. level temperatures to get better forecasts. Yeah. Uh, for you know, our modeling has gotten better and better, right. yeah. but we've never been able to get right into the storm to gather that That's data. Cool. And that will help critically. Uh, critical da data to help uh, with the forecasting ability. Let's take you up to the satellite imagery of Fiona now passing off to the north and west of Bermuda. Bermuda is right there. It's, it's there somewhere. There it is. It's underneath the high overcast. So Bermuda just had a glancing blow from the storm. Thankfully, the storm also weakening just a smidge. Uh, however, still a potent category three storm and Fiona will continue lifting on off to the north as Nina had mentioned, uh, probably making landfall somewhere along the eastern tip of Nova Scotia uh, tomorrow afternoon. So uh, a wild certainly event for the East Coast. All right, for us, we are quiet. We are cool. We are 52 to start the morning here in Portland, and it's going to be a lovely Friday. I'll step out of the way mid 60s by lunchtime, mid 70s, which is about average for this time of the year. Our normal high for uh, what's today? The 22nd? What is that? <laughs> it's the 23rd, excuse me. Uh, 75 is our normal high, and that's what we expect later this afternoon. All right, satellite radar imagery showing generally clear skies over the region, with the exception of maybe a few patchy clouds at the beach. We should enjoy plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Same story tomorrow. Same story on Sunday, so a beautiful forecast at the beach today. Upper 60s in Astoria, Pacific City and Newport climbing into the uh, upper 50s to low 60s as well. Columbia River Gorge, I need to get rid of that early shower. That's not there. Uh, you will see sunshine today and hopping over the Cascades to Central Oregon. A cool start in the 30s to low 40s, but warming into the 70s this afternoon. Burn started off at 32. You should get up to about 75 later today. Up and down the I-5 corridor. Mid 70s, pretty standard here. 74 in Longview, 78 in Eugene. We'll split the difference. We'll call it about 77 or so here in Portland this afternoon. Checking out the weekend forecast. This looks great, doesn't it? 80 tomorrow, 87. Starting to get a little warm on Sunday, Monday, 88. You guys thought we were done with the 90 degree heat, right? Uh, the typical last 90 degree day of the year uh, is back in mid September, but we have hit 90 as late as October 5th. I don't think we're going to get there, but Drew. 88 on Monday, a little toasty before we cool it down later next week. I'll tell you what, Chris, our guest in the studio here this morning kind of gave me one of these when she saw your forecast. Like, yes, I like the looks of that <laughs> forecast this weekend. Katie Bray is the executive director of the Oregon Cheese Guild. The Cheese Guild is bringing back a very popular event this weekend. It is known as The Wedge, a celebration of Oregon cheeses. We have lots of cheese on the show this morning, a little taste testing. Perhaps Brenda Braxton, if you're still in the room, you'd like to come over and join us for this oh, taste heck test yeah. in just a few minutes. <laughs> Keep slicing, Katie. We're back with more Sunrise in just a moment.